This is Soil Profiles, where we examine local crop nutrition challenges and the experts who solve them. Welcome to Iowa's Palo Alto County, where legendary ground makes historic corn and soybean yields possible at the beginning of each and every season. Helping area farmers make the most of what's possible from that soil is the responsibility of Aaron Kaiser and Paul Miller, agronomists with Ag Partners. At Ag Partners, we try to evaluate every field by yield zone. We uh, measure yield at harvest, we record yield, uh, and then we lay that over the fertility maps in the soil, the part per millions for phosphorus and potash, the, basically the, the capacity that the soil has to produce. So you know, we go from organic matter level to uh, CECs, the different measurements in the soil that uh, contribute to the yield. So then we, we create a, an equation and, and uh, a game plan by yield zone within each field. Our normal program in this area for uh, monitoring crop needs as far as nutrients would be uh, through grid sampling. That's primarily done on a two and a half acre grid. We're mainly doing those on a four year rotation just to make sure that we're keeping up with the amount of nutrients that are being pulling out of the soil. Uh, micronutrients we're sampling for primarily zinc, sulfur, and boron, and even manganese as well now too. Uh, we also do some tissue sampling along with that to monitor what we're actually getting into the crop throughout the growing season. And normally the results come back the same no matter when we do it as far as tissue sampling goes. It's always showing deficient or somewhat low in sulfur, zinc, and boron wherever we aren't already addressing those needs. High yields mean high levels of nutrients removed, and there have been plenty of both in this part of the country. Kaiser and Miller counsel their farmer customers on the most effective ways to replenish nutrients removed from the soil by successful seasons past. Zinc and sulfur is very important in this area. Our soils are naturally in low, basically, just from the number of years of crops that have been taken off of these soils. Uh, we do have a fair share of hog manure acres, uh, so a lot of those acres are fairly sufficient. But on the other acres, it's important that we're keeping up on that sulfur and zinc side of things. So uh, prior to beginning using the microessentials, uh, we were seeing a lot of sulfur and zinc deficiencies. Um, and as we started out, you know, we started using the microessentials and we weren't using any minimums per acre uh, in variable rate spreads of our fertilizer and it stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, I'll never forget the first field I did that on and the guy called me and asked me what the heck I did. From there on out, we made sure it was on every single acre. Um, we never had that issue whatsoever again. I mean, you could see exactly right to the line where it started and stopped in the field every time. Their status as trusted advisors to area farmers yields both results and responsibility. Kaiser and Miller carefully prescribe not just the right nutrients, but also the right way to deliver those nutrients. If we put out elemental sulfur, uh, elemental sulfur is going to take time to uh, mineralize and break down for the crop to utilize, uh, whereas the microessentials uh, has a combination of both the elemental sulfur and the uh, uh, SO4, the sulfate sulfur, uh, which is readily available to the plant. For me, the microessentials has been a huge part of my business. It's allowed me to really expand my fertilizer sales. It allows me to offer a product that's completely different than most of my competitors in the area. Um, and we've set it up as a value product, and it definitely the value is there and farmers see it uh, not only in the types of nutrients they're getting but also the end yield response as well too that we're getting it's it's just helped immensely 